Now let us take one more example of the first come first serve algorithm. So assume this is the process IDs. These are the arrival time. This is the burst time of the processes. Okay. So the process IDs of the processes are P1, P2, P3, P4, P5 and P6. Assume the process P1 arrived at time 0. Process P2 arrived at time 4. Process P3 arrived at time 5. Process P4 arrived at time 6. Process P5 arrived at time 6. And process P6 arrived at time 8. Okay. And assume the burst time of these processes are 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 1. Right, so let us find what is the average waiting time and what is the average turnaround time. Right, so here I have taken the two processes are having the same arrival time. That we, we, we will see if two processes are having the same arrival time, then what should, should we do at that time? Okay, at, for, for those processes. This is a Gantt chart. Time 0. At time 0, only one process arrived in the ready queue. So we are going to schedule that process for the CPU. So P1 process arrived at time 0. So we are going to give the CPU to P1 process for 2 units of time. So it will be there for 2 units of time. Right. So next process is arriving at time 4. Right. See, you can clearly see that uh, from time 0 to 2, we were having a process to execute. But from time 2 to 4, the next we don't have any other process uh, to execute because from 2 to 4 the system is re still remaining idle. So from 2 to 4 the system will remain idle. The system will remain idle. That means the CPU is not executing any task, any process. Then at 4 unit, fourth, fourth unit of time the process P2 arrived and it will be there in the system for 3 units of time. That means it, it requires 3 units of burst time. So P2 their process will be there for three units of time then the next process which is arriving in the system is p3 so p3 process p3 process will be there in the system and uh, it requires uh, four units of burst time so it requires four units of burst time okay so p3 process requires four units of burst time so it will be there till 11 units and then the p4 and the p5 processes they arrived at the same time see when two processes arrive at the same time in the ready queue then we schedule the processes according to their uh, process id we schedule the process which is having lower process id first as compared to the other process for example see process id is allocated when the processes are created it does not mean that if a process is created earlier then it will come to the ready queue earlier See, right so it depends on your long term schedule so process id may be more and the arrival time may be less but here what is happening is process p4 and p5 are there so maybe assuming that process p4 created first but process p4 and p5 both arrived at the ready queue at the same time so we will schedule the process which is having lower uh, process id uh, to the cpu so here uh, we are going to execute the process p4 for 5 units of time so we are going to execute the process p4 for 5 minutes of time so process p4 will be there in the system till 16 then we are going to execute the process p5 so process p5 will be there in the system till time 22 system means cpu and then process p6 will be there in the cpu till time 23 now what is the completion time so process p1 completed at time 2 process p2 completed at time 7 process p3 completed at time 11 process p4 completed at time 16 process p5 completed at time 22 and process p6 completed at time 23 now tell me what is the turnaround time turnaround time is completion time minus arrival time so completion time minus arrival time so 2 minus 0 is 2 7 minus 4 is 3 11 minus 5 is 6 16 minus 6 is 10 22 minus 6 is uh, 16 then 23 minus 8 is 15 okay then what is the waiting time the waiting time is uh, turnaround time minus the burst time so it is 2 minus 2 is 0 3 minus 3 is 0 6 minus 4 is 2 10 minus 5 is 5 16 minus 6 is 
then 15 minus 1 is 14 so what is the total waiting time it is 2 plus 5 7 7 plus 14 21 21 plus 10 is 31 so average is 31 divided by 6 there are 6 processes so 31 divided by 6 so you can get average waiting time is somewhere around 6.1 uh, 16 something 166 something right so average uh, waiting time is 6.166 something right so again our aim is to minimize this average waiting time but here uh, i wanted to show for this from this example i wanted to show you two concept number one if two processes are having the same arrival time then we schedule the processes according to their uh, process id right secondly if there's no process is available to execute in the system or to execute in the cpu so the cpu will remain idle at that at that time okay now let us look at what is the problem with the first come first serve scheduling algorithm see first come first serve, first serve scheduling algorithm as i already told you it is one of the easiest algorithm uh, which is available and it is one of the easiest algorithm to implement at the same time but there's a very huge or very big problem related to the first come first serve algorithm which we will see in the next video okay